this is a little change up of um, speaker, so welcome. Thank you. All yours. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. I love that because I was sitting in the back thinking, okay, I need to change myself as well. Don't we all have to come to grips with what's going on around us when it comes to technology? Who's heard of that, the, the phrase VUCA, B-U-C-A? Okay. It's, you know how we have buzzwords, you know? Um, we'll have to do that onboarding and we'll unpack that a little bit for you, you know? And then all those little buzzwords we kind of, <laughs> VUCA's getting that way as well, okay? So VUCA stands for volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous. And I think that applies to just our children sometimes, doesn't it? So, I mean, I don't have children. I've got a lot of nieces and nephews, so I'm one of those lucky ones that goes, here, yeah, have a bag. <laughs> yeah. So I think that's one of the concepts we need to come to grips with. Get out, come on in. That let it float around the back of your mind as you move forward in your career. And one of the things I love to do is to work with EAs and PAs because I think you're the epicenter. I really think that you can get into the heart of what's going on for your organisation and have an influence. More than probably what you realise at times. And so I, one, of the, one of the things we'll unpack is some of the key skills that we need to have as the humans, not the humanoids. Because I think it's so important to understand that we will be dealing with a lot more AI humanoid and technology as we go forward but in the future there's a future skills report that for 2020 that came out and top of that list can you guess what those skills were at the top of the list this is your part to play now <laughs> human interaction <laughs> close starts with i but yeah it's actually communication skills that old chestnut <laughs> yes how many communication skills courses and trainings have you been on who hasn't been on one ever. Right. Get my point. So why is it that we always have to go on one? Why is it that it's the thing that always comes undone for us? You know? That's the thing I think we need to really think about when it comes to skills. Because as much as we're, we're probably getting ramped up with uh, my job's going to be taken by a robot one day kind of headlines, the reality is it might not. It might be about working alongside the AI and the humanoids and the robotics and the technology. You still need to have those skills of the human. And I think that's really important. And I love that, that you know, Wendy's opened our eyes to the technology and what's coming. And who cringed a little when we went back in time? <laughs> yeah, I was there. Yeah. And my mum wanted me to do Pittman shorthand at high school. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm that old. Wanted me to do Pittman. She was as a subject. I just went, hell's no, mother. Yeah, but that was just me. I, I was spent more time on the sporting field than I did in a, in a classroom. So, I know, can you tell I'm a lead athlete these days? <laughs> Not here. So, what I find when I'm working with EAs and PAs is some of these things, and we can add to this list, of course, and that is that we're, we're forever working out ways to manage upwards without stepping on toes. Yeah. And especially when it's not our direct line. We've got to manage an ego that's over there a little bit, a little bit higher, and you're not in your head. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, hits the nail on the head that one, doesn't it? And it hurts sometimes. Yeah. So maybe we're not managing. Maybe the word there is avoiding. A little bit avoiding. Yeah. You know, we're managing multiple demands. So, you know, I've got to get this done. I've got to get that done. I've got to do this. I've got to say yes to that and no to that. How do I say no to that? How do I get people to leave me alone? I think all these things that are going on with multiple deadlines. You know, I, I am in awe of your role. Because the bit, I'm, I'm an incredibly visual person. Okay, I'm very kinesthetic, very visual. And my image of EAs and PAs is like 47,000 tabs are open up here. And you know exactly what each one of them are. I'm 47 tabs open up here and as dizzy as all hell. <laughs> but you know what tab is what. And that's the key difference. Never underestimate that value. Never underestimate that value. Okay. You understand and you anticipate the leader's needs. Do you get it right 100% of the time? Maybe not. 
But did you put a good hard effort in to do that? Yes, you did. And I think that's something that a lot of people could learn from what you do in that role. You know, thinking ahead of what's coming, you know, what's four weeks down the track for this project that my leader needs to know about? Now, I can see this person coming in and wanting to stir the pot a bit, so how do I prepare a situation that makes it a bit smoother? Now, that's the sort of stuff that you do, and you do really well. You know, managing boundaries. Who feels as though their boundaries get a little bit encroached upon? A lot. <laughs> Yeah? Would that be fair to say? Yeah. Can we add to this? What else? What else happens for you in your role that really kind of irks you a bit? I think it's just dealing with so many different personalities. Like you touched on that with the ego, but it's not just one, it could be like a lot. <laughs> you work with engineers too, don't you? Oh, academics. <laughs> <laughs> and I think, and while I get that there are certain types of personalities that sort of fall into certain types of roles. You, you're confronted with certain types of pattern personalities mm. who've got demands in certain types of roles. And uh, maybe we need to do a whole you know, behavioural assessment type thing and spend a whole day together doing that because I think one of the things is being able to read people. Yeah, you're a people reader, definitely. And like people, do we get it right all the time? No. That's how you handle that piece when you don't get it right. It's really important. Yeah. yeah. Anything else we want to add? This is interactive, by the way. I'm really lazy speakers, but you've got to give me stuff. <laughs> All right. When I do some mentoring and one-on-one -on -one work with a lot with with EAs and PAs, some of the stuff that really comes up, some of the stuff that drives these things, okay, is a bit of a fear. A fear. Am I really cut out for this? Am I, you know, am I actually putting too much into this and then I'm losing myself? You know, where's me in all of this future? You know, does, does doing these long hours and, and, and helping my leader, how much does that encroach upon my family? Yeah. So I think it's really important to, to address some of those things if that's what's going on for you. You know, I've worked with some EAs and PAs in one-on-one -on -one situations and they're struggling. Some of them are really struggling to find their space and to stand up and speak up and say, hey, I'm an incredibly important piece of this organisation. And I think there's a fear there that if they do stick their neck out, it's going to happen. Yeah. yeah. And I think that's what goes on. So, you know, I, I want to highlight that I, that I do spend a lot of work with the EAs and PAs, and I'm, just, and I'm loving working with the EAs and PAs to look at what's really going on with them and be of value to them. You know, this, this whole session that I'm in charge of is around essential management skills. So what I want you to do is grab out the Carsten's notepad paper, okay? Because I'm gonna show you a little bit of a video and on that notepad, I want you to write down all the skills that you think are essential for you, okay? Mm -hmm. So, all right. I'm sorry, technologically savvy, I have no idea. Right. Are you ready? <laughs> Troy, can I get some assistance? <laughs> this one's a bit here. Oh, it's working there, but not there. It's off. It's off. It's off. It's off. <laughs> <laughs> While that's happening, it's going to happen. The minute I start saying something, it's going to happen. CEO of Duke's of Duke Land Resort here in Queensland. So we sat inside the Department of Youth. So my number one client, according to some people, was who? Who works for government here? So you know who my number one client was, don't you? <laughs> the minister. <laughs> the minister, sorry. <laughs> yeah, the minister, according to some people. But I also had a CEO of the board. We're ready to go. Can you pause that? I'm having a little great story now. <laughs> we need to go back. 
So, um, so I also had a chairman of a board. Now, being the CEO of the youth organisation, I would have a pager. Again, I'm that old. But we had a pager. Anyone not know what a pager is? Please tell me. Good. Awesome. So it would go up at 6.45 almost every morning. Now, that pager was for emergencies only. If young people had fallen off a cliff doing their expedition or something like that. I'm talking triple O kind of emergencies. That's what that pager was for. So at 6.45 in the morning, I, the page would go off, and of course, certain words would come out of the front face, <laughs> and I'd panic. And then this pattern started getting more and more ingrained. And so I, it was the seat, it was the chairman of the board. Now, I just want to make sure we're good to go for this, this, and this this morning. Now, I'm not backwards and coming forward. I'm fairly assertive, to the point of sometimes being fairly aggressive, <laughs> especially at 6.45 in the morning. So I actually said, Alan, I love your enthusiasm for the Duke of Edinburgh's award. I don't love what time it kicks in though. <laughs> Two things, this page is for emergencies, and secondly, I don't start work at 6.45 in the morning for anyone. That's not in my contract. So let's renegotiate how we're gonna manage this, okay? I want to serve you because you are the chairman of the board of an organisation I love and want to do well with, which was a lie. But anyway, <coughs> and this has been recorded, we'll delete that out. Um, but uh, the ego, the ego are in play. And so we had to work really hard to make that happen. And for him to realise that he was actually creating a lot more stress and tension because that he was misusing, inadvertently, misusing a device that was meant to trigger a certain process. Yeah. So, yeah. All right, back to management skills. Right, I want, on the notepad, I want you to capture all the essential management skills you feel you need in your role. Hit it. <laughs> Getting him? Oh, no. Come on. Come on. Alright. Can you just go back to the last one? Just to... Alright, so did you get them all? Sure. Give me your attention. Well, you had your hand. And I need to add another one, don't I? To technology as well. Yeah, I think all of them. Yeah, we're not going to Google search for those. I did not get that. What did you get? Sure, hand. I did not get that. That was my little joke, and I'm not very good at jokes, but there you go. Especially when I try to do it on technology. So that's the thing, isn't it? There are just so many skills that come into play. And I think what happens is that we can build them up into something that makes it more complex than it needs to be. Now I Googled, just for a bit of fun to make that video, I actually Googled essential management skills. Heaps of hits and heaps and heaps of lists. And I just giggled through most of them because I just, you know, there's a bit of a reach going on there to make it the world's biggest list of management skills. But in that list are truly skills that we do actually use. What I'm going to share with you, you already have. Okay? No, you can't get your money back now that I've just said that. But you have these skills. Alright? There's no, there's no two ways about it. My job up here is to help you turn the volume up on them. My job is to turn the light on for you to go, hang on a minute. I do do that. Or hang on a minute. I need to do that a little bit better. Is that fair enough? Can I have the next slide and then I'll take it back over from you? So the way in which, thank you very much. Thank you for being IT. So the way in which I put all these skills together is into this sort of a model. So I think when we start to unpack a whole lot of things around the, the management skills we need, the skills we need to be successful in our role, we need to find a way to make sense of it. And so, I sort of divide them up into three <coughs> areas. The personal, the professional, and the people. So in personal, now what is it that I need to do about me? Where do I come from? How do I see myself? What things do I do that make me the, a better version of me? Self-leadership is another way of looking at it. And, and this could include things like your habits, your procrastination triggers, your time wasters. And before you go time wasters answering the phone, or time wasters other people, 
you have your own time wasters. We all do. And if you spend five minutes with it, I'll find it. <laughs> and we'll unpack it. And then we'll onboard something else with it. So, so there's the personal aspect. But in here also is our confidence. In here also is our ability to ask, our ability to step up and take responsibility for what we're doing, for ourselves and in the environment we work in. Down here is professional. And this is things like the way in which you do your work, how effective you are in getting your work done. And it could be things like whether you multitask or whether you do chunking of things or batching of things. Who says that they are the world's best multitasker? Okay, who's the second best multitasker? Yeah, who multitasks and knows that there's got to be a better way? <laughs> Just, I'm really passionate about productivity, and so just, just to give you some insight into multitasking, you drop your productivity by 40% when you multitask. You're also robbing your IQ when you multitask. You drop anywhere between 10 to 15 points, which is the equivalent of having uh, one night without any sleep. Maybe about three hours without sleep. So it's, it's one of these things that I think is really important. Now, here's a statistic as well when it comes to multitasking. 2% of our population can multitask. They're called supertaskers. Now, the other interesting, and I'm going to say it's a coincidence, statistic is there's about 2% of the population who are narcissistic psychopaths. <laughs> Just put it out there, it's a coincidence, I think. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> In here, it's how you do your work in the professional. And over there is people. So what do you think people's going to be about? Interaction. Interaction, Interaction yeah. yeah. Communication. The relationships you have with people. How you delegate, how you give feedback, how you influence, how you network. Really important. So what I think, though, is what, like the... The, the sugar on top, the gravy train that makes all this flow really well is in the intersections. Yeah. So between personal and professional, we need clarity. Okay, there's, there's goals and there's actions and there's vision of the organisation, but do they align with me? What is it that I want to achieve in this organisation and in this role? Does my, do my personal values align with the organisation's values enough for me to be a success in this role? Is what my leader is doing aligning with the organisation? Because you play a part in that. You influence that. Yeah. Any questions around clarity? Clear as mud? <laughs> um, boundaries. So obviously this is about whether you hold them too tight or hold them too loose. And we'll talk about boundaries later actually. And then between people and personal, we've got our relationships. You know, there's a great uh, line that a mentor told me a million years ago when I was doing a leadership course. It said, you cannot hate the person whose story you know. I'll repeat that. You cannot hate the person whose story you know. And what I took from that, my meaning of that is, when you and I know each other well enough and we have a good joke around and we have some good banter, I know you. Like right now, I don't even know your names. What's your name? Hello, I'm Heidi. Hello, Heidi. Yeah, you're picking on me, don't you? <laughs> Thanks for being a volunteer. <laughs> She's volatile. <laughs> but when we get on well, when we know each other, when you do something that I don't understand or I don't even agree with, I'm going to cut you a bit of slack because I know you're a good person, I know your intent, or I can guess your intent because we've got trust. So taking that time to get to know someone makes the world a difference. Never. You cannot hate the person whose story you know. Does that make it better? Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. You're welcome. <laughs> you cannot hate the person whose story you know. And it's not about agreeing, it's not about brown nosing, it's not about any of that sort of stuff. It's actually about having that quality relationship. Does that model make sense? It's in the books, isn't it? Check. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So what that means is that 
based on that little quick video of the 40,000 skills you're supposed to have, and then condensing them into a model like this, and we've only got about 35-ish minutes to go, how about we go deeper on a few things rather than try to do them all? So, assertiveness. Oh, what did that mean? What, what, what came to your mind just then? <laughs> so, okay, safe room. Safe room. Putting your best opinion forward. Okay. I'm putting my best opinion forward. Okay. And hoping that others will bend. <laughs> ah, hoping that others will bend. Interesting. Mm -hmm. what, do you, what else comes up for you when you see the word assertive or, or assertiveness? Things. No, what you're doing is the right thing. No, no you're doing the right thing. You have confidence in what confidence. you are doing. Okay. Saying no. Yeah. Saying no. Saying no. Yeah. Being seen as aggressive rather than assertive. Mm -hmm. Oh, I hear you. <laughs> <laughs> what was somebody's <laughs> confrontation? Confrontation. Yeah, it's so interesting, but that's not what this is. Mm. Now, I used to work, I used to live in Abu Dhabi. And I did a lot of work with the ASMPA, I did training courses and things like that. And you have this impression of people, particularly women in the Middle East, we've got an impression, right? Thank you, media. We have an impression of subservient, all cloaked in black, can only see the eyes, all that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. Nah. <laughs> no. When, when you're in a training room and it's all women, They also see assertiveness as being something where I stand up for my rights and people will comply to me. However, no, that's actually not assertiveness. And the thing with this is that when we are learning to be more assertive, it's like a pendulum swinging. If I've actually been a little bit passive or submissive and not really, I've been giving in and I've been saying, yes, I'll do everything and the, and the pile of work keeps getting up and I, I feel like you have to win, and then all of a sudden I realise what assertiveness actually means, and I step over into assertiveness land, and I actually step a little too far, and go, no, <laughs> no, give it to someone else. <laughs> I said yesterday, it had to be done yesterday, where is it? we still got to kind of, oh, calm the farm, <laughs> and find the assertive middle, yeah? So if this is a situation, if this resonates for you, don't be mad at yourself, just learn from it, okay? Don't be mad. Just calm your farm and find that nice assertive middle. So what is assertiveness? If it's not about bending others, I like that, I'm going to borrow that at home. If it's not about bending, if it's not about necessarily getting your way, what would we say assertiveness is? A balance? A balance? Is there more boundaries as well? Boundaries yeah. definitely come into play. Yeah. Confidence in what you're doing. Confidence is, is Confidence it sits time. there with it, mm -hmm. but it's not actually being confident. You need it in some regards to be assertive. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. It's more confidence in what you're actually saying. Yeah. One really clear definition of assertiveness is that I will respect my needs while also respecting Does that mean that what I want is what I'll get? Maybe not. But together we'll come up with a workable compromise. So I respect my needs while also respecting that you have needs. So when we're using assertive behaviour, I love this list because it gives us an idea about how we can actually use assertiveness in our day to day. So handling interruptions. Mm -hmm. Huge. The reason why it's first. <laughs> yeah. I love the line, I know you're at lunch, but. <laughs> like you're sitting in the kitchen and every day, I know you're at lunch, but. I love the urgent. Everything's urgent. <laughs> for everyone. Everything is urgent. Mm. Yeah. For everyone. And everyone. So the one day it truly urgent, is. Yeah. <laughs> it's not yeah. Not the boy who cried wolf. Yeah. 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 Have you had the conversation about that? Yeah. And didn't make a difference? Well, some people mm -hmm. don't understand all that. Okay. What's the definition of urgent? I say to them, and they're like, oh, yeah, maybe it can be done later. I'm like, okay. Uh, I'm going to do, all right, let's, let's do this now. We've got, we'll make time. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. Is this the white one? Yeah. 
<laughs> ASAP. You know what that means, don't you? As soon as possible. Who gets emails and just says, oh, as soon as you can, ASAP. You all do? Yeah. 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 Okay, so I'm going to pick on a few of you, and I want you to tell me what ASAP means to you when you receive the request. So I want something from you and I say to you ASAP, I want in time how long you think that's going to take or how long you've got. In time. And I know the first word that just went into your brain was what well, depends, because <laughs> um, I'm a mind reader and I've done this 20 million times. I Ballpark, okay? Ballpark in time if I say, can I have XYZ ASAP? I can't read that. Danielle. Within an hour? An hour, okay? <laughs> Who just, okay, your, what's yours? That day. That day, so COD? <laughs> close of business? <laughs> yeah. Okay. I know that's not time, but we get it. Obviously, when? Okay, you're not playing the game. <laughs> <laughs> Too smart. About <laughs> yeah, 30 minutes max if you said ASAP. Okay, well, mm. yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm not a bit of a so you push back? Yeah. Okay, good. Okay. Man. Now? Now. So one minute you need yeah, within a minute. Okay. And someone from the front here? Yeah, I started immediately. So a minute? Yeah. Okay. Now when you send ASAP, and I know I don't do that anymore because I've obviously said it right. Okay. I've heard all that in the head. Yep. So those of you who have done it though, what's ASAP mean to you? When you send that request, I suppose also within an hour. I'm Still an hour? Yeah. Okay. Good. I do include business that day. Mm -hmm. Still a minute? <laughs> yeah. What else? A minute? A minute? Yeah. Is this the same as here? Yeah. Okay. Alright, so for the engineering firm in the room, I did this with a group of 20 engineers mm -hmm. who work for the same company the same company, and I made all of them do it. We had anything from a minute to five days <laughs> when the request went to them. Yeah. And even on this side, when they made the request, it was all under a day. Yeah. Variations. So we're not even consistent in our own use of it. <laughs> I don't ever use ASAP. I actually no. state when I'm on something. Yeah, because yeah, you want to know. So it doesn't really mean anything, and we have our own conflicting definitions of it, particularly when we see who it's from. That's all about it. The middle of who it's from. Yes. And how yes. hard. that somehow. Or yes. better do that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so I think the, the fact that you do push back and you say when is really important. And I want you to make sure that you actually start building that language into your communications. You know, as the CEO of Duke of Edinburgh's Award, I was always saying, don't come to me with ASAP. I'd say to my team, tell me when you want it by. Help me to help you. ASAP means it's on or off the book. It'll never happen. <laughs> <laughs> Particularly, and what well, we have a government employee in the room. Good I am a government. It'll never happen. You know, um, and there's a reason why I'm not in government anymore. <laughs> but that's the thing. So I would say to my staff, I'm okay with you telling me what to do. Within reason. Um, so tell me, you know, you're helping the person. And that's, I think, some of the language that goes on in our head is that if I can't really tell this person what I want to buy because they're this person or they're this rank and file or they're this type of ego, I want you to get over yourself because actually asking someone to have it by X, Y, and Z is a helpful gesture. And in, none, in a no way, shape, or form is that actually rude. And I think if you both have a specific time and date, you're both working to the same goal. Like my ASAP is different to what I think somebody else's ASAP is and depending on the person is. Yeah. Because of date and time, everybody knows the expectation yeah. to be met. That's yeah. right. And if you can't, and if you, you feel like you can't make you're able that to date, use you that can actually communicate that back and say, hey, you know, like, yeah, it's ASAP is that's what? wrong. Exactly. Yeah. And, I, and that's the value of it. I know you know that. It, I just like the exercise so people can get some clarity and realise it's not always the same even inside ourselves. <laughs> yeah. 
You should see the look on the engineer's faces when we did it. <laughs> oh, that explains. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Do it with your team. If you work in a team, have fun with it. Do it with the team. Yeah. So we have a rule: you don't use urgent I S A P. Yeah. Um, but I can't that straight away because then you yeah. just get in a room and oh, I saw this person do this again. I'm like, but you didn't. No, you didn't say now. Yeah. So everyone's definition of it is different. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and given how switched on and connected we are these days. There's actually different definitions for urgent and critical, mm. particularly in the shipping industry. Yeah. So that's the way we're going. Other uses for being a server is that we're managing your personal authority. And a better way of saying it is that you're taking self-responsibility and standing up for yourself. Yeah. Speaking up at meetings, managing stress and anger, being able to say no and breathe through it and survive, yeah? It's a tricky one, that one, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Can I ask you all to please stand up? Can I help you? No. You <laughs> <laughs> first one in the last thing. Please. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I want you to put your feet about shoulder width apart. Let your arms dangle down. And I want you to say, no. 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 Say it again, please. No. no. You said no, up here, because I took you there with my please love me, please like me, high pitched voice, didn't I? Do you see it? Do you hear it now? Yeah. When I started the presentation, I was up here because I desperately want you to all love me <laughs> and don't reject me because I'm standing in front of all you beautiful people and I want you to believe every word I say. And then I'm going to hit you with the real stuff. Do you get the difference? I haven't just grown into a different gender, it's still me, <laughs> but you believe me even more now, don't you? So hands by your side. Let's do a please love me. No. No. Please love me. No. no. How does that feel? Feels a bit different, doesn't it? Okay, you're not even convincing yourself. Are you? <laughs> I'm on to you. Give me a no. I say, I don't think so. <laughs> That, that opens a door though. That makes a crack in the door though, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So say it to me. No. Yeah. Say it again. No. Say it lower. No. No. Sit down. <laughs> Therapy is now over. <laughs> okay, so here's the thing. You now have about 17 witnesses to say that you can use that word. <laughs> you have permission. And while it might feel awkward, and it might bump around and, and get a bit scratchy with people, the reality is you're helping them. When people don't know what your boundaries are, what are they going to do to them? They're going to sing and dance all over them. Yeah, so really important. Okay, handling conflict. Really important piece when it comes to being assertive is you staying in your assertiveness, calm self, and you let them walk. Not easy to do, oh, by the way, none of this is easy to do, okay, none of it is. It's practice, and even when you practice, it can still go wrong, okay? That's just the way it is, because we're dealing with humans, <coughs> and we bring our monkeys on our back, we bring our baggage, we bring the incident that it is, all those things come into play, the ego as well. So asking for improvements at work is another way of using your assertiveness, and managing other people's aggression. Really valuable use of being said. So, what assertiveness isn't, and I think this is really important, it's actually not a way for you to win and get your own way every time, because it won't happen. And you know yourself, when someone's about to be sleazy or smarmy or, you know, they want something from you, and you, you can feel it, and you kind of go, Detol bath time. <laughs> yeah? yeah? Yeah, that's that. That's someone thinking they're being assertive, and they're not. Or they're just sleeping. Like that, so. <laughs> A series of quick fix tricks or techniques, again, it's not. Okay. I'll show you the book cover in a minute, but a guy by the name of Bolton wrote a book called People Skills. It's very textbooky written, um, but really read it. Yeah, like old as the hills, but it's a classic. It's an absolute classic of a book. What's that? Yeah, yeah, something like that. Um, mine's like yellow pages, yeah, that's how old it is. Sort of yellow, yellow pages. So 
Um, and I've read it a couple of times, and it absolutely is brilliant for, for it's what I would call the number one resource to go to when trying to understand <coughs> skills. And even he says, this will not work every time. So when he says that, I'm going, welcome to the human race. <laughs> a way to manipulate other people so that you get your own way. Okay? When, we can see through that anyway. We know it, we sense it. We might not be able to label it, but we know it. So when we're being assertive, what we'd like to look like is, eye contact is direct, but not staring. That's a little creepy. <laughs> <laughs> Relaxed and easy move, so it's not like, hello, I would like to be assertive with you. Yeah. <laughs> you just went there, yeah? And I invited that, because our, our behaviour invites a certain reaction. Yeah. yeah. Open hand movements and not open smart movements. <laughs> be you, okay? That, that's what this is really about, just be you. And hands held up, not like that. But it's about, <laughs> but it's about being, being open. Whatever open, in your own body language means to you, that's what we're aiming for. Yeah. What would it sound like when you're being assertive? You're not up here just hoping that they'll say yeah, because I really want to. <laughs> and then it would, um, because it's, I think it's really important. Mm -hmm. No, we're going steady, we're being firm, we're being confident in our voice box. That was the second note, the, the lower note. Okay. Spontaneous. You can sound spontaneous at times, but the spontaneity, spontaneity in this particular situation is being able to be spontaneous in the conversation. Because you don't know whether they're gonna say yes or no to it, but it's being able to move and flow with them. Being sincere. Have you ever been stuck in a networking event or in a meeting next to someone and all you wanna do is just go, <laughs> <laughs> because every single thing that comes out of their mouth just doesn't feel right, doesn't sound right. They've done it harder, they've done it faster, they've done it worse, they've done it better. Yeah, we all got someone that we know, and you just want to go, oh, <laughs> well, swallow me now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't be that person. <laughs> be you. Yeah. And as best possible, be calm. Yeah. If this is particularly when this is a first or a new for you, it's always going to feel clunky and awkward, and yeah, you might shake. But the calm is for you. So even if it requires you to sit at your desk into a couple of deep breaths, where you go in for three and out for six, in for three and out for six, or you do if you're into yoga, you can do your nosy thing, which I can't do. My yoga instructor sacked me because I don't, apparently I don't breathe properly. Um, but whatever relaxation works for you to stay calm so you can actually step into that conversation. Really critical. Yeah. So how do you think, if you're being assertive, how do you think they're gonna feel? And how do you think that they're, they're um, the other person, yeah, how do you think the other person's gonna feel? What do you think they're gonna think you're serious if you're talking about? Yeah. More validity in what you want. Yeah. Maybe we will change the level of respect for next to you. To make it yeah, how would that feel for you if you know that they're going to respect you more? Yeah. What else? If you just turned to the page and cheated in the book, did anyone just turn to the page and cheat and look it up in the book? He's going to say, smart move. <laughs> yeah. How else do you feel when you know you've actually had a really constructive conversation and been assertive? Yeah? Is your own self-respect go up? Yeah. And I was just going to say, for me, it's often an email communication because um, the staff is so spread out. Mm -hmm. But like yesterday, a lady responded and she was like, oh, so, I'm so sorry I bothered you. And I thought, can I say, like, I don't know, I thought I was just trying to be assertive, but I think maybe she interpreted it as, I don't know, like something different, just how she responded. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like I was just like, oh, sorry, I just want to like, say the fact. Yeah, and I yeah, think it's it so hard. Yeah, and we can so lose a lot of sleep when we actually mm -hmm. trying to dissect an email. Yeah, and I think that's not worth it for anyone. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've come to a point where if I get an email and I and I don't get it, I read them straight away. Mm. Yeah, because it's not worth losing sleep. It's not worth mm. actually trying to second guess what they did in there and how I made them feel. Because mm -hmm. yeah. I didn't make them feel either. Yeah. Their feelings were their choice. I've sort of the communications um, 
right with Sipkin and basically you interpret the email how you're feeling at the time, same with the text message. So you can yeah, send anything exactly. and then I'll crank yeah. it, I'll read that. Yeah. And like, oh, ooh, that's how yeah. she said it. It's very difficult in text and emails these days. Yeah. 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 So you always be interpreting how they're feeling. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Definitely. Okay. Yeah. yeah, we're always looking through our own life goals. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Smart one. <laughs> Features. <laughs> <laughs> So just looking at how we feel, it's about uh, we feel good about ourselves, we're confident, responsible for our own actions, we feel more powerful, which is really important. You know, you're allowed to feel powerful. And I think in a room of women, you are allowed to feel powerful. Okay? The other person added, who said respected? Is it you? No, you said respected. Someone said respected, mm -hmm. thank you. Yeah. yeah. You treated fairly, you know where you stand, and there's harmony and good rapport. That's what we're aiming for. And here's the thing. If you're unsure where to start, here's a little script.
how do you not be the yes person? It is very difficult. It is incredibly difficult to start with not now. <laughs> because the reality is, let's face it, there's this huge percentage of the work you do is actually not no. It's just not now. <laughs> the truth of the matter is it's just not now. I'm focusing on something. Yeah. Okay? And so I'm actually creating a little on-desk calendar hangy thing that actually has that on there. It says, not now. You know, I'm just busy right now. It's a productivity helper that I'm creating. So it lets people, it manages their expectations. So it's not now or it's not me. How do you get past two? Like I have, like we have two CEOs. And one particular CEO, like he comes to me and it's always, I always feel like he feels like he's interrupting me. And I don't want him to feel like he's inter interrupting me because that's what I'm there for. Um, you know, like, how do you get past that? That's his business, that's though, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, that's his business. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. and so... But um, I, I could really feel it, you know, like every time he comes, you know... Like well, that's your choice to feel it as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to put it back onto you and say, yeah. mm -hmm. where do you really want to be spending your energy? Worrying yeah. about whether he's, yeah. he's doing that or what you've got to do. Yeah. Yeah. And... Make up something in your head that sort of says that's his business, not yeah, mine. Yeah. You know, I'm going to get a little woo-woo. There's your business. There's my business. Mm -hmm. There's universal business. Yeah. 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 Stick to your own business. With my love and attention. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to give her a gift. <laughs> <laughs> he's, uh, he's, he's taken a lot of training. <laughs> that was code, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> As yeah. a as a yeah. behavioural thing. He's a really thing. lovely, lovely man. Yeah. But he's just, you know, like he's he always feels like he's interrupting you. If he comes to you and says and, and wants to unpack that in, in and of yeah. itself as a behavioural issue, then you have permission to go there. Yeah. Otherwise, that's his business. Yeah. And he might. There are other strategies like broken record and continuously saying, mm -hmm. no need to say that. Yeah. No need to say that. Yeah, I'm here for you. Then keep going. That's what I'm here for. Okay, if you're going to do broken record though, don't stop. Yeah. Don't mix it up with other strategies. It has to be broken record yeah. every single time until you want to slap yourself in the face. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's infuriating, but that's one strategy, yeah. and there's yeah. many. Yeah. Yeah. So you do have a choice around that. Mm -hmm. So, so saying no, I get, is not always an easy thing to do, but taking that deep breath and saying maybe not now. Okay, I can't even read that 10 minutes. It's not now, or maybe it's not me. Mm. Yeah. And can I help you find the right person? The, tr the thing is, when they've come to you anyway, they've interrupted you, so your focus is gone. So if you still don't want to do it, then let me find the right person to help you. Or let's schedule some time so that I can actually give you all the attention. When my staff came to me, I would say, you get about 5% of my brain now or 100% in 20 minutes, which one do you want? And some of them cottoned on saying, they're not different. Um, oh, but, that's right, I think, I hope. Um, but they got it. They got that I was in the middle of doing something. But I also made sure that at the end of half an hour, 20 minutes, or whatever time frame I gave them, I got up and I went to them. What would happen if I didn't? Did I forget sometimes? Yes. Did I crawl profusely and buy coffee and muffins? Yes. <laughs> but if I hadn't done it, if I'd just written them off, they'd know it, definitely. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I think that's a real thing. And it's that take a breath. Trust yourself. Yeah. And it's don't, you don't stop on just no. Well, no, but let me go <coughs> away around this. You know, maybe it's not now. Can we go and make a way to do this? No, not me. How about we find something? And you don't necessarily have to say the no in your out loud. It could be, how about I help you find someone to do that? Okay, don't stand there and go. <laughs> <laughs> that will look a little stupid. However, you know you're saying it in your head. Yeah? So, yeah. how about I find someone? Can okay. I come back to you in half an hour? The reverse thing you've got in your CEO or your senior is you can't break him down. This way, this is how I 
what's your question in that? How do you work when you want to break him down a little bit where it's uh, a mutual respect as opposed to this is how I think and this is how it's got to be. Can I go can I go on a coach mode with you? Yeah. And, and can I be <laughs> dictatorial with you? Like, stop trying to break him down. Okay. Yeah. That's his business. Yeah. Okay, if he chooses to change because you are able to provide information around a relationship and how you want to be in the relationship, then that's his choice. Yeah. What I want you to focus on is how you can step into that relationship and be of value for him mm -hmm. based on the rules you can both come up with. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One of the really most bizarre exercises I ever did with a group of people, they were middle managers trying to work out their senior leaders. Mm -hmm. So we actually unpacked a diagnostic about their leader. How do they speak? How do they do they email or phone? Do they stand and how do they stand? Do they stand formally or do they stand, you know, like they're defeated as well? Really get to know them. Mm -hmm. So what my job I would say for you, first and foremost, to say the next five days, is sit back and truly observe. And what I'm what I mean by that is not just what that leader says, but the way they say it mm -hmm. and what do you think is driving them to say it that way? What's not being said? Because when you can actually just be present and watch what's going on with them, you may get exposure to a lot of stuff that helps them go, ah, now I need to say it like this, or now I need to be like that. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> uh, an interesting, I'll write this down. Um, cats and dogs, Michael Grinder, M-I-C-H-A-L-G-R-I-N-D-E-R, Michael Grinder, Cats and Dogs, YouTube. It's funny and it's true. <laughs> he talks about the personality of cats and dogs. And he might be a cat, you might be a dog, and so therefore you might have to be a cat in your behavior with him. Do you want me to give you a quick demo of a cat and dog? Mm -hmm. Okay. Cats come in and they walk around the house. <laughs> 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 These humans, they provide something, something for me to defecate in. <laughs> All I need to do is let my human know I need food. <coughs> the sound of my biscuits appear. I might be a god. <laughs> Dogs. <laughs> my human comes back. <laughs> I go out into the yard and I poop, and my human picks it up for me. <laughs> and every day, my human gives me food. <laughs> my human. Get the difference? Yes. Yeah. So he does it better and he's got much better explanation around it. It's his thing. Check it out. Okay. Yeah. So confidence. We talked about confidence before. Okay. And one of the things I think is really hard to actually put confidence in its nutshell on its own. So what I'd like you to do is think about how you network. When you're out networking, who goes to networking events? Who's a there's a PA, PA association, isn't there? I can't remember the name, but yeah, you're part of it? Yeah. So, do you show up to networking events and just hang out with the people you already know and have a cup of wine and giggle the day away? Or do you actually go there to meet new people? Who actually doesn't even go to networking events? Okay. <coughs> start. <laughs> start. And it might be worth having a conversation with your leader saying, I feel as though I need to do a little bit more networking just to boost my confidence. May I attend some functions with you that you think are appropriate that I attend? Okay. What do you think your leader would say about that? Yeah, I'm not taking the initiative. I like that. Yeah. And before they go, oh, she's going to leave me. No, I'm not leaving you. I just need to boost my confidence and I want to use networking as a way to do that. So the reason why I put coffee out there is not because you go and have coffee, it's because I want you to think about how you show up in those networking events. Now you don't want to be bitter and strong, you don't want to be overpowering people, you want to be rich and smooth and creamy and just like a beautiful cup of coffee that just wakes you up gently in the morning, <laughs> not the one that slaps you half the back. And I want you to remember this, We've spent so much time up here worrying about what other people think of us that everyone else is doing the same thing. They're not thinking about you. 
They're thinking about themselves. Mm -hmm. So when you show up to a networking event, everyone's just as scared as you. I'm a raving extrovert, could you guess? <laughs> uh, little wallflower like me. I am off the charts. When I very first did a Myers-Briggs type indicator, which is a personality thing, anyone done Myers-Briggs? Yeah. 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 So you know, I was really way down the E end. And it actually scared me a bit. <coughs> I thought, how's this hindering my progress? So I married a shy introvert. No, um, <laughs> but I have, you know, I've learned. I've had life lessons. I've been kicked. I've made mistakes. I've got back up. I've gone, okay, just calm the farm there. Yeah. And I wouldn't say I'm any. I wouldn't say that I've lost that extroversion. I've channeled it. So even those people that look like they're the, they've got it all going on on the outside. Trust me, they don't. <laughs> now, I've been a professional speaker for 20 years, and so, you know, I'm used to doing this. I'm used to standing up in front of you, but I still get nervous. And here's the trick. I actually get scared if I am not nervous. Because if in my head, when I'm nervous, I'm in service. Because I desperately want to do a good job. And just so you know, yes, I was nervous this morning. Um, but I want to do a really good job. If I'm not nervous, then I'm being complacent. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when we go to networking events, when we go to meet people, it's about actually stepping up and saying, I can do this. Okay. So what I'd like you to do is stand up. Stand up. Oh, just stand behind your chair, just for workplace health and safety. You're going to pretend like I know what that means. <laughs> chair, be careful where you are. I want you to lift one foot up. Just hold it for a second. Yeah? Okay. So when you get to a networking event, all you need to do is, is lean forward and step in and go. So do that. See how the body takes you? Mm -hmm. Alright, so when you get to a networking event, this is all mind tricks. Play it on yourself, okay? That stupid woman, I just put out one arm. <laughs> that would be my gift to you. <laughs> and I'm going to go for it. Okay? Let the momentum take you. Stop overthinking it, stop thinking about yourself, okay? Because everyone else in that room wants to know you too. And the more you network, not only the greater opportunity you have for more friends at work, in your work sphere, but you also have greater levels of support. The number one thing that helps an organisation get through any crisis is its network. It's not the, it's not the organisational chart, it's who you know, and more importantly, who knows you. And as you get to know people, and as you show up, the confidence comes. Have a sec. Thank you. Now we've got less than 30 seconds, so if you have any questions, fire away, fast and furious. <coughs> if you'd like to stay in touch with me and you'd like some goodies, just text me your name and your email. It's also in the book, so you can go back to it later. But as I'm a productivity person, if you do it now, you don't forget. Any questions? Yes. Um, so the not me or not now. Yes. Um, what if there would be this like repercussions? Like if I, if I was, I, I won't, if I was to say not now, I'd be not very, wouldn't be well received at all. Okay. So there's like this fear factor of losing your job. Yes. I think it's about doing the thing that they asked right then and when that's dealt with. Okay, so you need to change your role, change your task, do whatever they're asking for. And then when it's done, and when you're calm, say, could you help me prioritise? This is what I feel goes on. This is my interpretation. So my intention for this conversation, this is my intention for this conversation. I want to make sure I'm doing a really good job, but I'm, I feel like I'm conflicted. Yeah. 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 So do, if you feel like that personality is the personality that says, you'll do it my way now, or you'll do it now, then maybe that's it. Maybe you do do it and get it done because where are they coming from in their head? Yeah. So I mean, when you get it done, we say yes, then next time there's three things, and then you do that, and then next time, do you know what I mean? So that's, that's where you've got to get in there and break that cycle in there yeah. and have that conversation. Does that say get off? 
Morning tea? Wrap up. Wrap up. Wrap up. Wrap up. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get off. So that's where that piece is, okay? <laughs> In morning tea, let's have a chat. Yes, okay. So I have two more sets of management success packs. Who wants someone wants a set? Mm -hmm. Are you hanging up first, you say? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.